There is no sensation like drowning, because the feeling is not merely the agony, but a bewilderment at so alien a circumstance. The mind believes that there should be air, since there is always air to be had and the urge to breathe is such a matter of instinct that it requires a kind of focus to belay the order. Had I leapt from the bridge myself, I could have accounted for my new situation. Had I ever fallen over the side, I would have wondered, if only because this would have been imaginable. But it was as though I had been shoved out of a window right into the depths of the river. There was no warning. I kept trying to breathe. I remember crying out for breath, and more I remember the agony of the answer, the agony of water rushing into me, and how I answered the agony by heaving, which only invited more water. Hey guys, I'm back again, and I'm here to do my review of the Water Dancer by Tanahisi Coates. Whew. Okay, now where to start? Okay, the main character's name is Haram, and Haram is the slave master's son. In the beginning of the book, we see that Haram lo loses his mother and he's on his own. And his first recollection is not being able to remember his mother or his mother's name. And the thing is, he is known to have an excellent memory. All right. Now, that seems like a very simple idea to understand. But the rest of this book is not so simple to understand. Um... I had a, a lot, a lot of trouble with this book. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, like, I, mm, I see why y'all haven't been talking about this one. Because when this book came out, okay, first it was the anticipation of the book. And I had a big anticipation uh, for this book. And then it finally did come out. And when it came out, everybody was photographing themselves with it. My edition came two days after the release. So my edition was sent to me by the publishers. They messed up the address. So I didn't get it, like I said, to 48, 48 hours after the book came out. So after seeing the hype all over Instagram and Twitter, I just, the book came and I was just over it already. So I put it away thinking, okay, I'm going to let this rest a bit. I'll pull it out in 2020 and, you know, really get to it. So I had the possibility of buddy reading this book with a follower, Patrice, and I said, sure, Patrice, let's read something together. And she said, well, I've been wanting to read The Water Dancer. I haven't read it yet. I said, fine, I haven't either. So we picked it up and we, you know, started to read. Now, I can tell you right now that I had made it to page 60. And I was already over it. And I have to admit that if I wasn't doing it as a buddy read with Patrice... I probably would have DNF this book. I hate having to say that, but it's the truth. Now, <clears throat> the book uh, follows the main character is Haram, and the book is told in first person. So everything is coming from his point of view. I went in pretty much not having read the, the cover or anything to find out about it. But I I mean, after having read the whole stories, I still don't understand what the book is about. Sorry, I don't. I'm not understanding exactly what the focus is. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of the storyline just so that you can kind of understand. And that way you can follow my thought from there. So we have this character Haram. He is a young man 
and he is the slave master's son. So his mother has also has been sold away somewhere. We don't know where. And he is now being educated alongside his, well, alongside his brother. So when his brother isn't being educated by the same teacher, then Haram is getting his education by the same teacher. And then they're meant to sort of, you know, be with each other all the time. So basically the slave master says, you have to be responsible for Maynard. Okay, now Maynard is a different type of character. He's very rough around the edges. He isn't very good with school. He's not very good with etiquette. And he just kind of is like the bull in a china shop type guy. So the beginning of the book, we have an incident with water. And it's not written very clearly. But this incident is sort of like the crux of the story, this idea that this water appears. And as we, the story goes on, we realize that this water appears when Haram does something, this water appears. Now, Patrice and I still couldn't figure out why the book is called The Water Dancer, because the the first time we, we hear something about the water dancer, it's when Hiram sees a vision or a ghost-like figure of his mother up on a bridge. And we hear this mention of the water dancer. And then as the story continues, we realize that he has the power to make like a lake appear and it allows him to, to sort of displace himself a distance. So this is like some kind of supernatural phenomenon that I don't really get. Now, at the same time, as the story continues on, we have this whole story around the Underground Railroad. I'm going to find it very hard to explain this without giving any spoilers. So I'm going to have to tell you if if you don't want to know any spoilers, then go away now because I cannot find a way to tell you about this book without putting these spoilers in here. It's impossible. Okay, so the first part of the book ends with Hiram trying to flee the plantation with a girl whose name is Sophia. That he is in love with. Now this love relationship, in my opinion, it happens too fast because you barely even see it coming, okay? And it's there's a love relationship and then they're running off the plantation. So they get off the plantation and they're supposed to go to a meeting point. And in, instead of it being the Underground Railroad people, it's some slave catchers they've been somebody gave them up so Sophia and Haram wind up in these cages and then the next thing you know they're separated and Haram is put in with some other men and and boys and they're just brutally beaten and treated like just awful then at one point he's like the only slave left because they've sold all the other ones off and he gets bought by some people and then basically what they do is they put him with other slaves and he has to run for his life okay so every day they're waking these slaves up they're not fed properly they, they have not given water they're not you know treated properly and what they have to do is they have to run in the forest as far as they can before these men catch them. So they're being used as prey. And they're doing this every day. They're running off into the forest and you know they're getting caught. So with each day that goes by, Herm starts getting better at it. He starts being able to run back on his traces and do things so that he doesn't get caught right away. And one day he runs uh, a little bit farther away and then he makes this lake appear or this, yeah, this lake appear. Uh, this, what they call, they call it the, Sa the Santa Bani or something like that. 
So he makes this lake appear, and as soon as this lake appears, bam, he gets hit on the back of his head. The next morning he wakes up, and he's in a bed all cleaned up and everything. And this is when he realizes he has now become a member of the Underground Railroad. Now this is where the book, you know, I start... I start looking at this and I just start shaking my head like I don't understand what's going on here because amongst all of this there are there are lots of different passages that are written really well like the one that I read in the beginning I felt like that th there are like little little snatches of these passages that are written all the way through that makes sense but everything concerning this supernatural element which is supposed to be a major part of the book because that's one of the reasons why he's in this underground railroad they basically say you're a part of the underground railroad now because you can do conduction and that's what they call it conduction that name i don't get it stuff shooting from the hands you know lakes appearing moving across the lake with you know in one bound all kinds of weird stuff like this i ain't understand any of it the story continues on with this kind of supernatural element within the story. And then at one point you see as well Harriet Tubman, which key member of the Underground Railroad. But I mean, towards the end of the book, she started feeling like Yoda to me because I was just like, you know, I don't know. But I don't think we need to do all this with Harriet Tubman to, you know, make a point. But he did that and it was it was awful and I just you know I, I kept reading and I kept being marveled at the weirdness of this book and the fact that some people think it's really really good I just I don't get it I'm sorry maybe I'm just stupid but I don't get it I was you know I was actually reading I would say the first half of the book it's kind of boring it's it's kind of boring, not that interesting, and you don't understand what's going on. Because there are lots of places where things happen and people say things, and you don't really understand why they're saying that, why they're doing that. And now keep in mind, this is written in the first person. So the main character is Harem, and Harem is probably written the best. Okay, normal. It's first person. But what I didn't like is all the characters that are around him are very one dimensional. They are not fully fleshed out characters. So they only serve one purpose, if you want. It's very strange. So I, you know, I kept reading on and on and discussing with Patrice. And in the end, we came to the conclusion she thought it was a three star and I thought it was a two star. But guess what? Neither one of us un understands the, the book fully because there were things we just, we don't understand why he went down this road of the supernatural because the supernatural took a lot away from the story. And not only that, but it made it more complex, more difficult to understand. And it just didn't fit. So this one was a no ma'am for me. I, I would not recommend it. Sorry, I would not recommend it. And I hope that Ta-Nehisi Coates doesn't write any more fiction because that ain't his thing, okay? He need to stay with the nonfiction. That's the best I could do with this one. This was really hard to review because it the whole thing stems on a plot that isn't a great plot. Because this, I would say it's basically about a slave that escapes with the help of the, with the weird help of the Underground Railroad and how he changes because he learns about freedom and stuff. But then he goes back to the plantation and there's a whole new story there where they go back to the plantation to help because Harem wants to help Sophia escape and Thena, his kind of like his second mother escape. But what is the book really about? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, this is probably the worst review I've ever done, but it's the best I can do. Sorry that I had to give spoilers, but there was no way for me to explain this hot mess 
on my own. So sorry. This is the best I could do. So that's all I have for you today. Bye.